In today's video, we're going to be checking out the DC Collectibles, DC Comics, Designer Series, Aunt Lucia, DC Bombshells, Figure 7, this is Mira. To find out how tall Mira is, let's go ahead and grab the tape measure. If you count to the top of her hat, Mira is a 7 inch figure. Her one accessory is her trident, which looks not quite painted in gold, but rather cast in gold plastic. It's actually a nice looking trident. The only downside though is she doesn't hold it all that well. Uh, let me show you what's happening here. Her fingers are kind of in a weird sculpt. Um, they're not close together fingers, rather than the fingers in the middle are close together, and then the fingers, the, the pointer and the pinky, are spread apart. Um, you can fit the trident into her hand, but again, it sits really on the loose side. I mean, of course, you can also bring the two hands together, and she can wield the trident, uh, you know, collectively, with the two hands holding it, the trident together, but it seems odd the way that the hands are posed. Ultimately, if you just want to have her displayed with the trident in one hand, doing as such. She just doesn't seem to have a strong enough grip to hold it and ends up it just flops all over the place. Your best route to go is just having the fingers holding the, the trident in hand and then just kind of resting it on a surface, just keeping it upright like that. Speaking of, actually while we're on the topic of her hand, one of the big problems I have with this particular figure is it seems like they played the figure relatively safe. Uh, of the hands, for example, the weird kind of arthritic hands that they've given her make no sense for this particular figure. And the one hand that I would have wanted this particular figure to have, uh, she does not have, and that'd be a, a saluting hand. Even if we bring in the box, for example, there's the spine of the box, you can see Mira not only is a really beautifully drawn uh, character, but also she's got the saluting hand. And I, unfortunately, they didn't include one with this particular release that ultimately, if you just want to have her saluting, what you can always do too is kind of have it as look sh as if she's kind of flicking her hair up. But at no point does it really look like she's doing a, you know, a, a saluting gesture. While we're also on the topic of the, and having the spine of the box present, um, I feel like, again, this figure plays things relatively safe. I find her facial expression could have easily been more kind of a little puckery sort of uh, lip expression, but instead we get a very neutral looking face here on, on poor Mira. I'm going to move the box out of the way here just to not take away from the figure itself. Let's spend some time and talk about Mira's face. Right off the bat, I feel like the face kind of reminds me of Alanis Morissette. Isn't that ironic? I guess it really isn't. Uh, a red-haired Alanis Morissette. The face isn't terrible, don't get me wrong, but I feel like they could have played a little bit more to the expressions on these characters' faces. Like Hawkgirl, for example, was a prime example of a figure that had personality to her face. Even Batgirl also had personality to her face. Mirror, on the other hand, unfortunately just kind of has a very calm... Sure, you could chalk it up that she's got a little bit of a smirk on the one side of her of her mouth, but the figure does really play things relatively safe when it comes to facial expressions. He also has, based on the source material, a rather narrow-looking face, which should have been a little fuller, I think, in all honesty. To take nothing really away from the face sculpt, the face sculpt is really good, but again, I feel like things play rel relatively safe when it comes to this particular figure. She does have her little captain's hat on the top, which is molded. You can't take that off. And there's a little M featured on the top there, cast in gold. Oh, actually, it doesn't look like it's been cast in gold rather than painted in gold. Hair is sculpted quite nicely. A nice flowing curl to Mirror's hair. And she does have a really nice looking uh, costume to her, consisting of something that you would expect Mirror to have. The scaled sort of effect here in her top carries also here to the figure. I love the metallic green that they've used here on the torso, which also runs itself down the side of her leg and kind of into her shoes as well. The shoes are also one bit of a problem for this particular figure because the feet are so small that the figure has a real tough time standing. 
and why I used the display stand at the beginning of this review. You can get her to get the stand, but it's at some discretion whether, well, her discretion whether she'll actually stand upright the whole time. She may kind of topple over. Some other little details I really quite like about this figure is the bandana that's carried over to the back here. Very sailor look to her. She's also got an anchor. I'll show you here an anchor uh, necklace that's on a real rope. I like that as well. And she's got some really nice paint applications. Again, going back to the green, the metallic green is a nice touch. The metallic gold also in her bracelets, in her belt. And she's got these little buttons as well on the front of her uh, of her pants here. Speaking of her pants, her pants aren't quite white, rather somewhat a pearl sort of uh, metallic sheen to it. That same sort of pearl effect is also carried over to the top bandana and also to the hat as well. Everything I feel kind of comes together quite nicely and ultimately I just feel like the figure plays things again, I want to go back to an original point I made, relatively things relatively safe. Um, you know, she's she's not a terrible figure by any stretch of the imagination, but she doesn't have as much the playfulness that I would expect from like a mirror figure. Uh, again, like Hawkgirl is probably looking to be one of my favorite figures from this particular wave, just because she's got the, the great paint application, great sculpt, but she's also got one fantastic looking uh, expression, which unfortunately mirror just doesn't have here. Let's run through her posability. Her head is on a ball joint. As you could probably imagine, because of the nature of the curls in her hair, it makes things a little bit more trickier to move her head left and right, but you can move her head up also up and down. Universal joints on the shoulders, which again are really, um, I say again, but the joints are really stiff on this particular figure. At times, feeling as if the shoulder's telling you to stop. You can go a little further to get a full extension out from the arm, but it, it seems to want to catch on itself right at the top here of the sculpt of the shoulder coming into the socket area of the torso. She has a swivel on the bicep, a double hinge on the elbow, and she's also got a rotation and hinge on the hand. An upper torso ball joint, which is actually right underneath her, her chest area here. And she's got a lower torso crunch leading itself into her belt area. Legs move forward and back and out via a ball joint. Sometimes though, when you do move the legs out, it causes for a weird looking effect with the legs, ultimately making it look as if the legs have kind of become separated from the rest of the body. And then lastly, you've got a double hinge on the knee and a hinge on the foot. These feet are a little on the, on the stiff side. She doesn't also appear to have very little in the way of an ankle rocker. But again, all the time that you're displaying her, especially if you're displaying her a little bit more create, creatively, uh, you may find you may want to bring in a display stand as the figure does have considerable problems standing. DC Comics Mirror by no means is a bad figure. I just feel like there was a potential that she could have had that unfortunately just didn't play out. The back of the package, the figure actually looks a lot better, but by no surprise there, Pick figures on the back of packages tend to look a lot better anyways than the physical figure in hand. Um, she has a great look to her, she has a great sculpt to her, but still I can't help but feel like the face could have been something a little bit more, a little bit more playful and certainly a lot more expression than what we ultimately got here. She's at the middle of the mark here, I don't feel like she's one of the worst figures, but I don't think she is as good in all honesty as DC Comics Hawk Girl. Still a great figure to pick up if you are looking to add this one to your collection. You can head over to your local comic book store as these guys are currently, or these ladies I should say, are currently in stock. Today once again we are having a look at the DC Collectibles DC Designer Series Aunt Lucia. And this was figure 7 of the DC Comics Bombshells. And this was Mira. If you guys like this video, certainly hit it with a like down below. And if you'd like to check out some more DC Collectible reviews, I've got a whole playlist designated just for that. Also, if you haven't had a chance yet to hit that little subscribe button down below, don't miss your chance. Don't say tomorrow you'll do it. Hit that little button down below. You'll never miss a beat when it comes to future videos. We are on our mark. Get set, go. We're on our way to 5 million subscribers. And you guys can help with that as uh, we get closer and closer to that 5 million <laughs> mark. I can't even say it with a straight face. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.